Sometimes what happens is we don't actually trust in our hearts as much as we think we are. You might think you're trusting in your heart. You might think, oh, I trust my heart, but your mind may be controlling you more than you might be realizing. And that's the trick with the ego, right? Is that when your ego is controlling you, you don't realize how much your ego is controlling you. You don't have the conscious awareness to be like, oh, right now, my ego is controlling me. It doesn't like, like the ego doesn't like announce itself saying that you're being controlled by the ego. When you're not following your heart, even though you might be think you're following your heart, that's the thing. You might be thinking that you're following your heart. You might be controlled by your mind. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to make sure that you're following your heart, how to know for sure that you're following your heart and how to always know that you are on the right path, but not a logical knowing. It's gonna be an, an intuitive knowing. So, if you're new to this channel, what I want you to do is I want you to hit that subscribe button and I want you to hit that notification bell. Also, if you wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one personally, hit the link that's in the description box of this video. Also, I do have a group program coming up in the next couple of months. So if you want more details on the program and if you want to be a part of the program, the link will be in the description box of the video as well. The enrollment is closing soon, so check it out if you do want to be a part of it. So how can we know for following our heart? The first thing you want to do is really tap into the fact that logic is not always the answer. Okay, logic is not always the answer. There's so many moments in my life where I thought that logic was the way to go. And to go, I need to use my logical mind right now in order to accomplish this. I need to figure this out. I need to be practical. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with order and structure. In fact, that can be a big trap in spirituality. So you have such a big spiritual ego that you're like, oh, I don't have time to be orderly. But then to dishonor the order of life is also to, to dishonor the spirituality of life. Because you can't separate the two. Right? You can't separate the formless from the form. But at some point though, we can be honest with ourselves and realize that we are being overly logical. That's the truth. Sometimes we are being overly logical. Too much thinking too many thoughts, too much fear. So the question is, the first way to know if you're following your heart over your mind is, are you being logical or are you living in fear? Now, there's nothing even wrong with fear. That's what I'm saying. Fear, to some degree, is a healthy thing to have because if you go to the woods and, and then a bear starts to attack you, there's nothing wrong with feeling fear. That's your survival. That's your humanness. That's the human part of you protecting you. But now we're stepping into a space in society where we're in a survival state of being, but there's no bears attacking you. So what happens is that we're being overly logical because the truth is that the divine is always protecting you. There's always support happening on your end. But then what happens is that we question our intuition. We start to feel these intuitive nudges telling us to go in the right direction, but then the mind will come up with a story. It'll say, don't go in that direction because you need to do fill in the blank, whatever you need to do. See, when I was dropping out of school, for example, a couple years back, it was like almost a year and a half ago at this point, which is crazy to think about. I remember, you, you can even go back and watch my first video on this channel where I realized that it wasn't for me, or that's like around the time where I realized it wasn't for me. That was like, I realized it a little bit before that video, but definitely still check out that video because it's really interesting to see the difference and uh, where I've come to be, so to speak. But here's the thing. When I was dropping out of school, I had this intuition that I needed to follow what you can call a divine path. Now, it's not to, create an identity around you know this divine path but it was an intuitive nudge that was hitting me telling me 
you need to go in this direction. And it wasn't a logical voice. I did have logical voices connecting with that intuition, but what I didn't realize at the time was it was my spiritual intuition getting much more powerful, telling me to go in a certain direction, to move in a certain direction, to move in the direction of where I really wanna be going. And it's interesting because this intuition that was coming up was contradicting the logic that happened in my mind. So my logic was saying, you need to stay in school because you need to be practical. You need to do this. You need to stay in school to do that. Now I'm not saying survival is a bad thing, but like if I was really honest with myself, it's like I knew I would be fine. I knew I'm still gonna have a place to stay. I knew I was still gonna be able to have my survival needs taken care of. And I had that trust. And there was logic there too. I was logical enough to the point to say, okay, am I gonna have a place to stay? Yes, I will. That's it. Am I gonna have food and water? Yes, I will. Anything other than that was just unnecessary fear. That's it. That's all it was. It was just unnecessary fear. See, sometimes we become overly logical and we justify it as just regular logic. But sometimes being in a dysfunctional state of fear is not logic. Logic is what's the next step? Drink the water, eat the food, cook the food, go record that video, go take the call. But when we're overly logical, we're thinking 20 years into the future about something that hasn't happened yet. I'm not saying to not think into the future and plan, but we can take it too far. Now, I'm not here to tell you how you should live your life, but for me personally, I definitely saw I was taking it too far. And I noticed this within myself a lot, just to see that there was a very dysfunctional thought pattern going on where I could feel something in my body, which society dismisses as woo woo, it's like, oh, don't trust your feelings. But then my mind was saying to stay in this program. But when I really started to think about it, how would I feel if I was gonna stay in software doing that program? How am I gonna feel in my body? How would I feel staying in a program that's totally out of alignment with what it is that I wanna be doing? How would I be feeling how would I feel in my body? And the more that I would think about it and also feel into the environment that I was in, I came to the conclusion that it would be a horrible existence to say the least. At least for me subjectively. Me subjectively, this human vessel, being in software was not a fit. And so what I realized was I had to drop out. And then so why am I sharing all this? Like why is he telling his life story? Because what I was learning and looking back at my journey was I was learning how to trust in my intuition. I connect with so many people, so many people that think there's something wrong with them when they're talking to a certain person or in a certain career path or doing a certain job. And then the one insight that I had couple last couple months is that there's nothing wrong with most of these people that reach out to me it's that they don't trust in their intuition. So when you feel this anxiety coming up when you're studying at school, are you honest with yourself? Are you being honest with yourself? Is there anything wrong with you or are you just living a lie? Is there anything wrong with you or are you just not trusting in your intuition? Are you not trusting in your heart? Maybe you wanna be a videographer whatever that is exactly, because I'm not sure how that works. I'm not even sure if I've ever said the word videographer. Maybe you want to be an artist. Maybe you want to be a coach. Maybe you want to be a Reiki healer. Maybe you want to start a business, but then you're lying to yourself. See, when I was in software, it's not that I consciously was putting myself in pain. I didn't reach what I call the pain threshold. I didn't realize I was causing pain to myself. I was living a lie. The only way we can stay in things that don't feel good is by lying to ourselves. 
Why do you think people stay in dysfunctional relationships? Because they haven't trusted in their intuition and they are lying to themselves. That person is not serving them. Like if somebody's in a toxic relationship, maybe that person served them. It's not to judge the person or judge the old career or judge the thing that you used to do. But the question is, is it still serving you? And sometimes we know in our hearts that it's not serving us anymore, but our mind comes up with a story, a story around why it's still serving you when you know in your heart that it's time to let it go. So what's the lesson here? The lesson is, are you telling yourself a story and going against how you feel? That's how you trust in your heart. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. The question is, how do you feel? How do you feel? Do you feel good in that relationship? Do you feel good in, in the job that you're doing? And check with yourself, really be honest. Because that's the thing, right? Is I thought I was being honest with myself, but I wasn't. I thought that I was following my intuition, but my mind was controlling me more than I thought. I was already on the spiritual path while I was in school. And I thought that I was trusting the universe, but then the universe gave me another lesson and said, wait a second, are you really trusting yourself and the divine? Are you really trusting? Because if you did trust, would you stay in this career path? Would you stay in this career path that's not serving you if you trust yourself? Because here's the insight that I had. Here's how you follow your heart right now. This is it. You've made it this far in this video. Here it is. Me staying in school, doing something that I hated would be a fear-based decision. I'm going to share that one more time. Me staying in school, doing something that I hated would be a fear-based decision. How is it a fear-based decision, Francis? I'm going to tell you because, because I had a fear that if I drop out, I'm not going to be able to do what I love. I'm not going to be able to find what I didn't even know I wanted to be a coach. I didn't even know I wanted to start a coaching business or to start a YouTube channel. I didn't know that fully. I kind of made videos and I felt the flow and the intuition was guiding me to some degree to be a speaker of some sort, but I didn't know exactly how that was going to make income for me. Check out my first video on YouTube. I had no idea. But what I did know was this, that if I stay in school doing something that I hated, it would be a fear based decision. Fear that I wouldn't be able to find something. Fear that I wouldn't be able to figure something out. And the moment that I realized that looking back at my experience, I remembered that fear based decisions always lead down a path that is not preferable. See, there's infinite timelines in this reality. And we make a decision when we make a decision based only on logic and overly logic and being fearful, it leads you down a timeline and a parallel reality because all possibilities exist, right? Any like there's infinite probabilities in this moment in terms of where your life can head. And when you follow your heart, you're entering a probability and a reality where there's much higher probabilities for you to experience a life that is more abundant energetically and down the line, even financially too, because everything is energy. And so what I realized was that I couldn't be making fear based decisions in that moment because of what I knew in my heart. And so what did I do? Well, honestly, before I signed the papers, I already dropped out in my mind like three months before that, right? I could feel like I was dropped out already internally. But then eventually I said, okay, I need to go sign those papers. And the moment that I signed those papers, I felt free because I knew that I was making a non fear based decision. I started to become fearless. Now, why am I sharing all of this? The only reason I'm sharing this is because what I want you to understand is that you can make fearless decisions with logic. It doesn't mean you have to neglect your humanness. You are a human being. You have survival needs. But the question is, are you being honest with yourself 
when you say you're being practical. Are you being practical or are you just scared to go after what you want? There's nothing wrong with practicality, but here's the thing. People that are realistic don't manifest their dreams into existence. If you're only realistic, if you're only living based on what you've experienced in the past and what you think is possible, then that's not who manifests. A hundred years ago, all the technology you see would have been magic. People would think that you're, you're a witch if you had the technology that you have now in society. And somebody had to push that status quo. Somebody had to say, what if there's something that can be possible that hasn't been done yet? Somebody had to break that belief system. There's a classic story of, I don't remember exactly how it works, but there's, there's a story where there was like a record set for like a running, like a, the 100 meter dash or something like that. Don't call me on this exactly. Somebody let me know in the comments below if you know what I'm talking about. But there was like a record that nobody was able to beat. And the moment that somebody beat that record in terms of the time that they completed that 100, that, that 100 meter run in, a certain period of time for that 100 meter run, many other people across the world also beat that time. They beat the record. So what does this prove to us? This proves to us that basically you don't need to worry about if something is impossible. You need to trust in your heart in terms of what you want to create. And it doesn't matter if somebody hasn't done it yet. Now you could look it up online and see if somebody has, maybe that'll increase your belief system, just like the 100 meter dash. Somebody says, oh, is this possible to uh, complete this 100 meter race? Let me, let me Google it online. And then they say, oh yeah, it actually is, okay. And then they complete it. But somebody was able to complete that without having that external proof because they trusted in their hearts. So if you need to look something online to prove to yourself that it's possible, by all means, go ahead, go and do that. But it's not necessary. All you really need to manifest your dreams into existence is a trust in your heart, a non-logical trust. This trust that I'm talking about is a knowing so deep, but it's not a logical knowing. It's an energetic knowing that you're on the right path. And when you're following your bliss, when you're following the divine path, you're not gonna have any question whether you're on the right path or not. Because the only questioning that comes in is your mind. The mind is what creates the doubt. The mind is what creates the insecurity. The thinking about the past and the future is what creates negativity. Now, does that mean that we're not practical? No. Make sure your survival needs are taken care of. Make sure that you feel safe and secure to the degree that's possible within your circumstance. But don't let that hold you back from following the path that you feel is going to be the best life for you. Always follow your heart. Honor your humanness as well, but learn to trust in how you feel and trust in the divine intuitions that you get. And it's not as complicated as we think. How do you do it? Ask yourself, how do you feel and are you being honest with yourself? Because intuition is a non-logical thing. But the more that you can trust it, the more that you will realize that you have the power to create the life that you want, okay? So that's all I have for this video. Once again, if you wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one personally, hit the link that's in the description box of this video to apply for a free consultation to see if you're a good fit for the coaching program. Also, I do have a group program coming up in the next couple of months, gonna be super powerful, and enrollment is closing soon. So if you wanna be a part of the program, the link will be in the description box of the video as well. As always, have yourself a great day and I'll see you in the next video.